I will fight anyone who doesn't like this book. to Jeanette McCurdy's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. If you're living under a rock and you have no idea what that book is, it's a memoir written by a Nickelodeon star who was on iCarly, and it chronicles all about her struggles as a child actor, ranging from eating disorders to addiction, but mainly her very complicated relationship with her narcissistic mother, who was very verbally abusive, very overbearing, and very, very controlling, and pretty much a huge reason why she struggles so much as a child actor. And it gets really complicated because the mom is also dealing with cancer. So that's another layer of the complex emotional burdens that she's had to deal with. But then after she discovers therapy and quits acting, she embarks on this journey for recovery and finally gets to decide what kind of life she wants to live. She was offered hush money from Nickelodeon so that if she accepted the money, she would agree to never talk about what was going on on the set. And she didn't take the hush money. And the gag is she's probably going to be a way more more successful from this book and get so much more money than what Nickelodeon could have ever offered her and that's on karma. I tweeted about this and clearly a lot of people resonated because it reached to people outside of book Twitter but what I noticed from the responses that I got was that a lot of people had picked up this book despite not regularly reading books themselves. A lot of people claimed that this was the first time that they picked up a book in a long while and that is so exciting to find a book that is so good that it renews this enjoyment for reading. So that is pretty much the inspiration behind this video. I am someone who has read a couple of memoirs and nonfiction, and I've enjoyed quite a few. So if you are someone who is new to reading, like maybe this is the first time you picked up this book and you really enjoyed it and you want to read other books just like it, or maybe you're already a reader and you're just anxiously waiting to get the book in your hands because it's already sold out from Amazon and in bookstores, or you're on a long wait list at your library and you need something to pass the time, I have a a list of book recommendations for you because if you like this book then I think you might like these other memoirs. I'm also amazed at how much people can remember things when they write their memoirs because I barely have any memories from my childhood let alone last week and apparently according to my therapist that's a trauma response. I've been taking more photos and filming vlogs so that I can remember these things better and one of the things that I've done recently with my photos is print them out and this is thanks to today's sponsor Free Prints. You see what I it there connecting trauma to a sponsor deal that's on monetizing hardship fortunately these are happier memories these are basically pictures that I had on my phone of my partner and I and what's cool about free prints is that you can basically just upload your photos directly to this app and they will print it out for you so I have all these cute memories of my partner and me from when we were in San Francisco and New York yes it was completely free and with my code with Cindy 15 you can get these for free as well. So these are 15 photos, four by six inches, and they cover shipping. So you don't even need to take your credit card out. I really love how these turned out and they have tons of other five-star reviews if you want to look them up. This offer is only available for new customers in the US. I totally recommend for you to try it out for free because you're not losing anything. You literally get free photos. So thanks again to Free Prints for sponsoring. And now let's dive into the video. I have five books for you and the order of recommendations, it's going to be based on what I think is most similar to Jenna McCurdy's book and as we go down the list it will kind of venture out more if you want to kind of expand and try out different writing styles or different subject matters but I think they all share similar themes of a young woman who has to grapple with trauma and survive through it and then thrive through it so the first book I'm gonna recommend is Educated by Tara Westover if you thought I'm glad my mom died was wild you're gonna find educated bonkers so Tara is a woman who was born in the mountains of Idaho with a survivalist family, meaning that they believed in the end of the world, so they were always stockpiling cans, and they didn't believe in hospitals or schools. So she never saw a doctor or a nurse anytime she or her brothers had a dangerous injury. It would just end up being treated at home with her mother's herbs. And she never went to school. She didn't have any kind of formal teaching, didn't know math, didn't know basic grammar, didn't know anything about history. The family was so isolated from society 
society that the government didn't even know that they existed and therefore no one intervened when her brothers became violent or to even ensure that she had any education. So eventually Tara decides to educate herself. One of her brothers helps her find these old textbooks where she goes out of her way to teach herself math and grammar and science and she ends up educating herself to leave her family and go to a university. But even when she goes to college her life experiences are so clearly different from other people and she doesn't know a lot of social norms so her classmates will often think that she stinks because she doesn't properly wash herself or wash her hands because her parents didn't believe in that kind of stuff. She has like an awkward moment where she asks in the middle of class what the Holocaust is because she sees it as a word in her history textbook and everyone is like, um, who is this bitch? But she becomes so dedicated to educating herself and learning more about the world that she is able to get these scholarships to go to Harvard and Cambridge and finally explore the world outside of Idaho. As someone who has nearly flunked a math, I find her initiative amazing, but it makes sense because she was so sheltered. And by educating herself, she was finally learning more about the world and also kind of expanding the boundaries beyond what her family was giving her. So it's a book about self-invention and deciding the kind of life that she wants to live now that she's better informed, even if that includes severing the ties that she had with her family. I think this book would be super interesting to people because not only is it just like a roller coaster of traumatic events, but it also has the substance of weaving humanity into complicated family relationships. I think it's super easy to just list out all the wild shit that happens to you, but what I really appreciated about this book was that there's this sense of reflection and poignancy as she looks back on all of these events. And even though she dealt with such horrible treatments from her parents and her brother, she's able to still make them multifaceted. She includes these tender moments that makes sense why it's hard for her to let go of them, especially since they have been all that she's known. And I feel like that was another thing with Jeanette's book that I enjoyed, that she was able to include happy memories with her mom as well. And I think that's the thing about abuse. People are not just terrible villains all the time. There are these nuggets of good memories that kind of keep you hanging on. Educated was a special book to me because I felt like it was proof that even if you come from a dysfunctional family, you don't have to be trapped in your circumstances and that you can seek a better life for yourself. I'm so happy that both of these women, despite being so sheltered, were still able to transform themselves and really figure out their own identities outside of their family. Next book I'm gonna bring up is The Glass Castle. This one has also been compared to Educated. Truthfully, I wasn't as into The Glass Castle as I was into Educated just because the writing for that first book was so good. Whereas I feel like The Glass Castle was more a recollection of events that happened to this author rather than a deeper, sense of reflection that I would have liked but a lot of people still enjoy The Glass Castle so if you are looking for similar books this one is about Jeanette Walls who similar to the previous book had very non-conformist ideals about the world. This family also lived off the grid so they were kind of like nomads. They were moving along southwest western towns and they were camping in the mountains and her father was normally a charismatic man when he was sober and he was actually really smart. He knew a lot about physics and geology and he would teach them to the kids and he really encouraged them to be very imaginative. And her mother is a painter and a writer and she's so into her craft to the point where she neglects her children because she's so absorbed by her art that she doesn't even provide like the basic necessity of taking care of her family. But when they do live in places, it's like a hovel. Everything's so dirty and messy because the parents just live in their own little worlds. So she's consumed by making a painting. She won't even like cook a meal for 15 minutes and so the kids have to figure out how to cook a meal for themselves. And later when they ran out of money and the appeal of being a nomad kind of faded away, they settled down in this mining town in West Virginia and the father starts to escape into alcohol and the family becomes more dysfunctional and Jeanette and her siblings end up having to fend for themselves and try to support one another until they eventually gather enough resources to be able to leave home, which is seen as a betrayal by their parents. So so this is another story about how this woman has so much willpower as a young girl to be able to get out of her situation. But I do think this book in particular has a little bit more affection towards her parents. She still thinks about them fondly, at least the way that she described it in the book, despite them not being that great of a parent. So despite all the awful things that happen, there is this theme about complicated familial love. There's also a movie adaptation for the book with Brie Larson. So if you're interested, you can check out the movie 
as well. The third book that I'm going to recommend is my favorite memoir of all time, maybe even my favorite book of all time. That is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This one doesn't dive into her family. She actually seems to have a pretty healthy family. And thank God that she does because she's going to need that support system. She was a woman who had been raised by Brock Turner. And if you don't know who he is, he is this disgusting college student from Stanford who had raped her behind a dumpster at a party when she was so drunk to the point that she was unconscious. What made the situation blow up into global news was when she wrote an impact statement letter and that letter was posted on BuzzFeed. At the time, she was anonymous, but the letter was so impactful because it was 14 pages long and she detailed all the emotions that she's felt and the impact that he did to her as a rape victim. This letter was viewed by 11 million people. It was translated globally. It was even read out loud at Congress. She wrote this letter because he only got six months in jail because the judge thought that he was too much of a promising athlete to throw his life away like that. And she was so angry that she wrote 14 pages of how much he really affected her and her family. So then about a year or two later, she has published this book called Know My Name, where she finally reveals her identity. And she goes into more about growing up with her sister and then the incident that happens at the party and then the very prolonged process of trying to get just a sliver of justice afterwards. So she dives into the very frustrating process of going to trial and having to relive the trauma and how you kind of have to throw away your whole life just so that you can make it to all of these court appointments and also just dealing with isolation and shame in a culture that seems to prioritize the potential of men rather than the impact of these victims. I will fight anyone who doesn't like this book. This is pretty much the closest thing to perfection in a book that I can get because her writing was so good. She was able to articulate so many of her thoughts and her memories and all the awful emotions that she's felt in such a beautiful and metaphorical way. There's so many incredibly thoughtful lines and some of the lines like would literally make me go, wow. And I feel like out of all the memoirs I've read, this is like the most hopeful and inspirational one. I wanna read out loud a quote that I really enjoyed where she says, I survived because I remained soft, because I listened, because I wrote, because I huddled close to my truth, protected it like a tiny flame in a terrible storm. Hold up your head when the tears come, when you are mocked, insulted, questioned, threatened, when they tell you you are nothing, when your body's reduced to openings. The journey will be longer than you imagined. Trauma will find you again and again. Do not become the ones who hurt you. Stay tender with your power. Never fight to injure, fight to uplift. Fight because you know that in this life you deserve safety, joy, and freedom. Fight because it is your life, not anyone else's. I did it. I am here. Looking back, all the ones who doubted or hurt or nearly conquered me faded away, and I am the only one standing. So now the time has come. I dust myself off and go on. The book just made me so teary-eyed because her writing is so impactful and hopeful, and I just love this bitch so much, and I just want nothing but success for her. Next book that I'm going to mention is Made, although I will preface and say that I didn't really enjoy the book as much as I did with the Netflix adaptation. The Netflix series takes more liberties with it that I felt like was more emotionally poignant. It follows Stephanie Land, who at 28 was going to chase her dreams of attending a university and becoming a writer, but then she finds out that she's pregnant. So instead of going to school, she ends up becoming a housekeeper to make ends meet. And the book talks about what it was like to grow up in poverty. There's a huge emphasis of what it's like to be poor. And that's what I most appreciate about that. Because when you're poor, there is so much emotional turmoil. There's all the logistical struggles of you having to calculate everything that you're spending money on and making sure that you have enough. And then there's also just the emotions that come through with being burdened by lack of money in the first place. If you get into any accident or something happens, you're pretty much screwed and that is so stressful. And she's doing all of that while trying to take care of her kid, who she loves very much. And that's the difference here between this book and Jeanette's book. There's clearly a lot of strong love and adoration between this mother and daughter here. However, Jeanette did grow up poor and she talks about sleeping on a mattress in the middle of the floor and how that factored into her resentment against Ariana Grande, who has lived a totally different privileged life from hers that therefore gave her more 
more opportunities that Jeanette didn't have with her own mother and her own circumstances. So I feel like if you're interested in that aspect of Jeanette's story, you might be interested in Maid as well. Maid goes more in depth with what it's like to be homeless and having to rely on financial assistance from the government. But again, I did end up liking the Netflix show better because I feel like the book kind of gave more anecdotal pieces rather than being more introspective. Whereas the Netflix series, it isn't like a true adaptation. It's based loosely on the book. I feel like it expands so much more on the story by really getting a sense of the kind of family she came from. So the main character in the series that has a similar circumstance to this author, she has learned to be independent and resilient and so focused on taking care of her kid despite dealing with an abusive relationship. And also her mother is someone who wasn't really present. Her mother was also very overbearing and unreliable as a mother figure. She was also verbally abusive and dealt with narcissistic tendencies. So the main character really had to put up a wall between herself and her mom and knew that she was truly on her own because she couldn't rely on her parents for that. So I can definitely see the similarities more with that series and Jeanette's book as well. So if you give Maid a try and you're not really feeling it, I would recommend to pivot towards the Netflix series because even though it's not truly a real story, there is a lot of real situations that are shown in it because there really are women who struggle with poverty and abuse and not having a reliable family as a safety net. And then the last book that I'm going to mention is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I'm putting this as the last in my list because the subject matter is not quite the same. It focuses more on the author's experience with an abusive same-sex relationship. And the writing is very much different from the other memoirs I've recommended. I feel like a lot of nonfiction and memoirs tend to be very straightforward with recalling the events. This one is a bit more experimental because she frames all of these experiences that she's had with that former girlfriend in these little vignettes that are used more like a horror story. So the writing is a lot more lyrical and not everyone will be into it, but as someone who loves descriptive writing and metaphors, I was all over it and I also thought it was a very unique way of framing this relationship with the lens of a speculative horror story. So even though it's not about family, it does deal with similar abusive dynamics. However, there is more of this complex layer of a queer relationship, which I don't think is really talked about when we think about abuse. So if you went ahead and read all these previous memoirs and now you want to change it up a little bit and read something a little bit different, then In the Dream House might be a, a more unique book for you because it just has very pretty and lyrical prose. It frames the different traumatic events a little bit differently in this narrative. And there's more of a sense of poetry with the writing. So that pretty much wraps up the books. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and unsubscribe from my channel. If not, I'll see you next time. Bye. It's been three months since we talked.